you want to make a modded Minecraft server in 2025. We're going to show you how to do that with Neo Forge. This is basically the spiritual successor to Forge. Forge still exists, but Neo Forge is the updated, more modern version that's getting a lot more mod support than the old Forge mod loader is. There's also Fabric. How do you know which one to choose? Well, go with the one that most of your mods support. If you have mostly Neo Forge mods, go with Neo Forge. If you have mostly Fabric mods, go with Fabric server. And if you have mostly Forge mods, go with a Forge server. These mods do not work together. Forge mods don't work on Neo Forge. Neo Forge mods don't work on Fabric and vice versa and all combined. They do not work. It has to be for that specific mod loader. And so because of that, pick your mod loader and then go with that one. Now we're going to be using Neo Forge in this video. If you want to use Fabric or Forge for your Minecraft server, don't worry. There's guides in the description down below on how to start a Forge server and how to start a Fabric server, meaning that no matter what, we've got the video for you, no matter what kind of modded server you want. To get a Neo Forge server though, you want to go here. This is the second link in the description down below. That will take you to the download page for Neo Forge. Go ahead and click on the latest Neo Forge installer link here, and it will go ahead and open to download. You may need to keep or save it. You may not, but we're going to go ahead and save it here. While that's saving, I do want to mention this server is not a 24-hour server. It's only going to be up and running when your computer's up and running. And modded servers are super resource intensive, sometimes needing up to 16 gigabytes of RAM dedicated to just the server, a really, really good CPU, all of that stuff. And the server that you're starting here is only going to be up and running when your computer's up and running, and it's meant to just be for your friends. It's not meant to be a public server because it's hosted on your IP address. And anyone who gets the server can do things like DDoS you, which is basically hit your internet offline and figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates. What if you don't have to worry about any of this though? What if you want to start your modded server in a super simple and easy way? Don't have to worry about the hardware of your computer. Don't have to worry about anything to do with the server itself except adding the mods you want to it. Well, that's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in. Go to the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple to start your very own 24 hour DDoS predicted Minecraft server for you and your friends. Friends. At Simple Game Hosting, you can install mod packs in just a few clicks. Mod packs are collections of hundreds of mods, and you can even add your own mods super quickly and easily using our easy-to-use file manager. Plus, there's expert live chat support there to help you out along the way should you run into any issues. For example, let's say you add a mod to the server, you go to start the server, and it doesn't work. Well, our support team is there to help you out and make sure that your server is up and running and good to go. To go check out Simple Game Hosting, get the first link in the description down below the breakdown .xyz slash simple to start your modded server the simple way. Now, now we have NeoForge downloaded. We can go ahead and minimize our browser. We want to make a new folder on our desktop. So right click, create a new folder, and title this folder Modded Minecraft Server. Technically, you can name it anything you want, but we're going to name it Modded Minecraft Server. And 2025, because that's what this guide is. Once you got this folder created, we want to find the NeoForge file we downloaded. Now, for me, that's going to be in my downloads folder here, but for you, it may be in wherever your files download. Sometimes that would be the desktop. I moved it to the desktop here, but don't worry, we don't have to keep this file forever. Go ahead and right click on NeoForge, click on Open With, click Java, and click OK. But if you don't have Java there and you click on it and it doesn't work or something like that, well, that's because you need Java. Java is linked in the description down below, specifically our in-depth guide on how to download and install Java for Minecraft mods and servers. And this is a modded server, so you obviously need Java. Right now, that is Java 21. In the future, it can be Java 22 or 23. And guess what? This guide should still work as long as you get the newest version of Java that is mentioned here. This version will always be the one for the newest version of Minecraft. So if 1.22 or 23 comes out in the future, if this changes, guess what? We will update this here as well. You may also need to run the jar fix, which is found in the description down below as well. This is going to take all the jar files on your computer and link them back to Java, making them work together. But first, get Java, then run the jar fix. If you're having issues starting your server later, this is what you need. Jar fix here will fix that for you. Nevertheless, we can now go ahead and minimize our browser and again, open up NeoForge by right clicking on it, clicking on open with, clicking Java, and there it is. Now we first want to install client. That's because any mods in, you install on the server need to be installed locally as well. And that includes the client itself. That includes NeoForge. NeoForge needs to be installed on your computer and anyone who joins your server's computer. So we'll click install client there, click proceed, it'll download and install. Just as long as Minecraft and the Minecraft launcher are closed and you've played the version of Minecraft that you're installing NeoForge 4, this will all go off without a hitch. There we go, successfully installed, click OK, and now open up NeoForge again. Right click open with Java and now we want to install the server side. So go ahead and click on install server. You'll get this red box, click the three dots within the red box, and then go to desktop and find the folder you created. In our case, that's going to be the modded Minecraft server 2025. Go ahead and select that, and then go ahead and click on the server starter jar here. We want to make sure that is checked, and click proceed. It's now going to go ahead and download everything, get everything up and running for your modded Minecraft server with NeoForge. This is just going to take a second to download. That's all it's doing. There's really nothing that can go wrong in this process. As long as you have selected the correct folder, 
you're good to go. And it will signify that by saying successfully downloaded. Click OK, and now we can delete NeoForge from our desktop. We do not need that anymore. Open up the modded Minecraft server folder, and this is what you need to get your server up and running. It's all here. However, if we double click on run.bat, which is how you're going to start your server, and if you don't have the .bat here, by the way, just go to view, and then you want to go down to show and make sure that file name extensions is checked. If it's not checked, the .bat's not there, but if we do a view and then file name extensions, boom, there we go, run.bat. Go ahead and double click on that, and your server's going to attempt to start. That's assuming you have the correct version of Java, like we talked about earlier, and you have ran the jar fix. If you've not run the jar fix, this probably won't work, but give it a try if it does, awesome. However, it's gonna fail no matter what. What I mean by not working is it's not gonna have all this, you know, basically information, and it's not gonna end with, you need to agree to the EULA. If it ends with, you need to agree to the EULA, you're good to go. Press any key to continue, and you'll now have an EULA.txt file. Open this up, and assuming you agree to the Minecraft EULA, which we do, you can go ahead and change EULA equals false to EULA equals true altogether, right like so. Go ahead and click File, Save, and it will save the EULA. Close out of that, and we can double click on the run.bat again. And now our server's gonna start. At this point, our modded server is online. It's going to be joinable. We're actually going to join it. So let's go ahead and open up the Minecraft launcher. At this point, you're the only person that can join this server, by the way. We'll talk about how your friends can join it here in a second. But first, let's make sure you can join it. Let's make sure there's no lag with you joining it, because if it lags with just you, it's gonna lag a lot more with your friends on there. There's also this GUI that it opens up. Very, very useful and helpful for managing your server as well. Now, again, we're playing Minecraft with mods. We need to launch the mod installation. So in our case, that's NeoForge here. You'll make sure mod is checked in the top right. But there it is, NeoForge. Go ahead and click play. Click play again. And now Minecraft will open up with NeoForge. Here we are in game. What we can now do is go to multiplayer. Click proceed. And we can add a server. You can name it anything you want. I'm going to name it local connection. Because this is a local connection that only you can use. The server address, though, must be localhost all one word exactly like that. Go ahead and click done. It will load it on up and double click on local connection and it will join us right on in. You'll see Nick's games in the bottom left down here. This is me. That's me joining the server and we are now in game. Now there's no mods on this server currently, but it is working in a basically it's a vanilla that could have mods added to it. We're running around. Things are good. All of that stuff. Awesome. Now, what if we want our friends to join this server? Well, we will need to port forward. Luckily, in the description down below, we have an in-depth guide on port forwarding for a Minecraft server. It goes over everything you need to know to get your server port forwarded and allowing your friends to join it. They'll then use your public IP, but that's all covered in this port forwarding guide here. So go through that, get the port forward set up, and then your friends will be able to join. Now, I bet you also want to add mods to this server. There's tons of different Minecraft mods out there, but we have two places to get them linked down below. Specifically, we have CurseForge and Modrinth. Both are great for getting mods and can be filtered for specific mod loaders. So in our case, that would be NeoForge and for the game version 1.21.4. So if we wanted to install a mod, for example, if we wanted to grab Waystones, we would simply come in here and download it. Now, here's the thing if you're getting Waystones, for example, though, you would go to Files, you would download Waystones for NeoForge, right like so, but... We also need another mod for this to work. If we just downloaded Waystones just like this, it's not going to work, right? We need to get another mod, and you can find those by clicking on the mod itself. So we have the mod file here we downloaded. Click on it, and you will see if we go to Related Projects, and we will see Required Dependency Bomb, right? Like so. If you don't install Bomb alongside Waystones, it's not going to work. So we can go here, go to Files, and then we want to find the NeoForge 1.21.4 version. Download that, and now we have Waystones and Bomb, and we can install both of these. The same can be done on Modrinth. For example, if we come in here for a mod that I know needs something else, Irish Shaders, for example, if you go into versions here, you will be able to see, if we go to NeoForge, its dependency is Sodium. Now, one thing I will mention, Sodium, Irish Shaders, they do not work on servers. And if you install them on servers, a lot of times they will break. So don't do that. But this is just an example of how to see dependencies. With that being said, we can now go ahead and get some mods installed. So we want to go ahead and close out of this and stop our server. To properly stop your server, type stop either right here in the console CMD or here in the GUI. Stop, hit enter. It's going to shut down the server properly, saving everything along the way. Now to install mods. Well, our mods are in our downloads folder here, which uh, I need to go get bomb. Apparently that didn't download. One second. There we go. Bomb appears and we can move that to the desktop as well. And we need to install these in two places ourselves. Your friends will also need to install these mods in their local mods folders, which I'll quickly show you how to do. But on the server side, just open up the server folder here and then go to mods and then move these over. I'm actually going to copy and paste them over because we need to install them in our mods folder locally in addition to the mods folder on the server here. But as you can see, they're now in the server mods folder. And you can actually go ahead and start the server with those mods installed. How do we install these locally though in order to actually join the server with the mods? 
lives? Well, we need to open up the Minecraft launcher, and then in the Minecraft launcher, we want to go ahead and go to installations up at the top. When you go to installations, find your NeoForge installation, right here it is, hover over it, click the folder icon, and that will open up your Minecraft folder. In here, there should be a mods folder. If there's not, just go ahead and right click, create that new folder, and title that folder mods, right like so. Open your mods folder and move the mod you want to install into it. Now we go ahead and play Minecraft with NeoForge here. It will open up with our mods installed and our server will be good to go as well. Go ahead and move all of this over just so we can kind of see things a little better. But then you'll be able to join your server. Again, your friends will also need the mods installed in their local mods folder, in NeoForge, all of that stuff in order to join the server. Sadly, that's a limitation of modded Minecraft. Everyone has to have the mods locally in addition to them being on the server. But if we go to multiplayer here, click proceed, we can go ahead and click the local connection and it will join us on in with the mods. It is worth noting, you don't have to port forward or anything like that on simple game hosting as well. So if you're struggling with that, just go with simple game hosting because it makes it easier. Now, the Waystones mod should be installed. One of the easiest way to check that is it's going to be going to creative. If we go ahead and come over here into the CMD, we can type op and then our username, no slashes or anything like that, OP and our username. That's going to give us permissions for basically controlling the server however we want in game and doing including going into creative mode here. Then we can click over and Waystones, there it is. We can place these down and start using them. That being said, you now know how to get mods installed on your Minecraft server and make a modded Minecraft server in 2025. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comments. We'll see you in the next video, and I'm out. Peace.